there is one topic that apparently you ladies are obsessed about and that's your cervical elation because <laughs> we keep receiving so many questions about right. it. One question was, can I open my cervix with my finger? Yes, and in this video we are gonna give you the answer and we also gonna tell you why you should not worry too much about your dilation and what to focus on instead at the end of your pregnancy. Exactly. <laughs> Natalie here is a pregnancy and birth consultant and TCM therapist. And Matthias is a researcher and science geek and what we do on this channel is helping expecting mummies and their babies naturally and science-based. So can you open your cervix with your finger? <laughs> Alright, so as you probably already know by now, there are many different ways to help open a cervix. Mm -hmm. There are natural tools that you can try at home to support that process. Mm -hmm. There are medical tools to soften and dilate your cervix. For example, oftentimes they administer prostaglandins to do that, right? And then there are also mechanical ways to help a cervix dilate. Yes, mechanical ripening basically means that we forcefully dilate the cervix. And there are several ways to do that. So one way is with a finger. But here is the catch. First of all, this is only an option if you're already a bit dilated, as otherwise you would not be able to stick a finger through your cervix, yeah. right? And second, this is something that you should not try by yourself. This is something that only a doctor or midwife should do. Yes, and we say that because some people have very funny ideas about doing that by themselves, mm. not only with a finger, but also with various toys, right? And we are like, nope, please don't do that. Mechanical ripening is really something that only your doctor should do, right? right? In fact, oftentimes they do it anyways during a vaginal exam, right? Exactly. It's called a membrane sweep. And the idea of a membrane sweep is that a doctor inserts a finger into the cervix to help dilate it. And what they would do is they would separate the membranes that connect the amniotic sac to the wall of the uterus by sweeping their finger across the membranes. That's the term membrane sweep, right? Yeah. And that process can cause the release of more labor hormones which help prepare the cervix for labor and dilate it. Exactly. So now you understand why this is something only your doctor or midwife should do, right? Because the problem is that an untrained person wouldn't know what it feels like in there. Yeah. And you certainly wouldn't want to mess with the amniotic sac of your baby, right? right? So please don't try that by yourself. <laughs> now earlier Natalie said that there are several ways to sort of forcefully open the cervix in a mechanical way. So what's another approach? Well, the other mechanical approach is called a balloon catheter or Foley balloon. And if we place the tip of the catheter into the cervix and inflate it, it can help dilate the cervix over time. But that too is obviously something that only a doctor can do, okay? Yes, yeah, so please don't just insert a balloon into your cervix. <laughs> and if you now roll your eyes because you think, oh, come on, stop saying that, it's <laughs> obvious that I shouldn't insert a balloon into my cervix. Well, let me tell you, you haven't seen the kind of emails <laughs> that we sometimes receive. Okay, all right. So with that said, please keep in mind that these are only just two ways to help a cervix to lead, yeah. right? There are plenty of other ways. However, mm -hmm. there is one point that women often miss, and this is something that we would like to make clear again. Yes. So oftentimes women ask us if it is okay to naturally induce labor at week 37. Now this can work, please don't get me wrong, however in most cases it will not work because it's too early. Yes, when we look at scientific studies, we clearly see that most natural tools for labor induction, such as nipple stimulation for instance, are much more likely to work if your cervix is soft at that point in time when you try to naturally induce labor, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. That is just one reason why natural labor induction tends to work better as you're getting closer to your due date mm -hmm. because then your cervix is more likely to be soft. Yeah. For the same reason, natural labor induction is less likely to work in week 37. Yes. In fact, people often forget that a soft cervix is a prerequisite for further cervical changes, most importantly for cervical dilation. And so rather than focusing on your dilation, we would focus on softening your cervix from week 37 onwards. Exactly. So there's no reason for you to be obsessed with your dilation. First of all, your contractions will take care of your dilation. Mm -hmm. That is what contractions are here for, mm -hmm. among others, right. right? And actually, we know lots of women whose cervix was zero dilated when they went into labor. 
but they still had a normal delivery. Yes, and second, dilation is not everything. When it comes to the start of labor, there are also other factors that play an important role. The position of your baby plays a role. Your mind also plays an important role that should not be underestimated and other factors. Exactly, so if you have not done so already, watch our video on how to help your body soften your cervix. Mm -hmm. It hopefully pops up now. In addition, watch our video on the best sitting position to help your baby find a good position for labor. It's supposed to pop up now. But if those videos don't pop up, you can also find them in the description below this video. Right. If you have found this video helpful, we would be super grateful if you could leave us a like below this video. Yes. And for more useful tips and tools on pregnancy and baby related topics, make sure to subscribe to our channel and to hit the bell.